Growing up to eight metres long, dwarf minke whales might be incongruously named, but there's no doubt about their magnificence. They're also rather mysterious animals, except for once a year, when they gather at a remote spot off the coast of far north Queensland for a bit of, well, action. And it seems that having a whale of a time with each other lessens their inhibitions and arouses their curiosity about us. For marine biologists, it's an incredible opportunity to learn about these beautiful creatures that we didn't even know existed until just a few decades ago. On the outer edge of our continent, where the Great Barrier Reef meets the deep ocean, a human offering is taking place. The swimmers are bait, minky bait, hanging off a rope to attract this incredible animal. The dwarf minky whale. They may be called dwarf minky whales, but uh, they're not small. The longest ever measured was 7.8 metres. What's the first thing you see when they approach you in the water? I think it's that white spot, the shoulder blaze, which is unique to the dwarf minkies. And you see that shining out of the blue and then they glide towards you serenely and silently and come up and look at you. And it's an amazing experience. Marine biologist Dr Alistair Bertels has well and truly earned his nickname, Professor Minky. He has spent more than 2,000 hours in the water with them. You've been studying them now for what? 25 years. Do they still take your breath away? Totally. The incredible thing about dwarfed minke whales is that no one knew they even existed until the 1980s. So for scientists, it really presented a unique opportunity to start studying an animal from scratch. That's a tough job, but what's made it easier is that here on the Great Barrier Reef, these whales actually seek out human company for a few months every year. Does any other creature on Earth do that? As far as we know, there is nothing like this on Earth. And these encounters are unique. We need people looking in all directions. So we need somebody looking out to port and somebody to starboard. So, Where was it first spotted? Uh, it was uh, to the northwest, and it was only 100 metres away. Alistair Bertels has brought us and scientists from James Cook University to Minky Central, ribbon reef number 10 in the northern sector of the Great Barrier Reef, 220 kilometres northeast of Cairns. Once a whale is spotted, it's time to move. <whistles> Naomi, we just saw one 30 metres away, maybe two whales. She's got one. She's got it. She got two or three. She? She's got three. She's got three whales. Dr Bertels believes the minkies come here to find a partner, and it's their natural curiosity that draws them to us. I think when they see curious things like us in the water and so on, that they come for a better look, and, uh, and then a better look, and a better look. And, they are very, very curious. These encounters only happen because they come up to us. You can't chase after them. There's, we don't use any inducement at all. What's your last minute advice, Alistair? Um, patience and enjoy. Um, basically, these have been fairly wary whales, but the girls have just signaled three whales, so they've just had three go through uh, underwater. So, again. Twice they've come through now. Twice two passes in the last three minutes. Let's do this. I'll see you in there. Yep. 
It's deep, and the minkies can come from any direction. But as with any wildlife encounter, there is no guarantee. Ali's coming back, I think. So I was in the water for about 25 minutes. We know that there are whales nearby, but I'm clearly not very good minky bait because I didn't see them. So what happened? I didn't see any whales. <laughs> well, not very interactive. They've been uh, off on minky business. You know, they, uh, <laughs> it, it's kind of reassuring that they're not completely obsessed with us and that they go off and do their thing I mean, sometimes, but uh, it makes their visits when they do bless us with their presence as mm -hmm. uh, even more special. With minky whales, patience really is a virtue. And so we wait for a new day. And with it come the whales. The minkies are everywhere. So we waste no time getting into the water to observe these little known mammals. Suzanne Hillcoat is a PhD student from Canada. Look where we are. Does it get any better than this? <laughs> It's not a bad office, I must admit. <laughs> Using this stereo camera device, Suzanne is recording measurements of the whales and their behaviour with divers and each other. I'd like to see the differences in behaviour by life history stage. So, for example, are juvenile females acting differently than adult males, those types of things. There seems to be far more that we don't know than what we do. <laughs> and with every one question we answer, there seems to be like weeds, five more pops up in its place. So it's very much a continuing process. And it's this mystery of the minkies that can keep Dr. Alistair Bertels in the water for up to 11 hours at a time. He takes his position at the end of the line, photographing, sketching, and taking notes on plastic paper. Every day, every week, begin, brings new discoveries. The Minky Whale Project has started collecting shed skin samples for DNA testing. And it was only recently that satellite tagging revealed how far these whales travel. And so we tracked them down the east coast of Australia, um, this immense migration journey, cross Bass Strait, round Tasmania, and then they jump off south-southwest deep into the Southern Ocean and down to the sub-Antarctic. That's a big swim. It is. It's a, it's a huge journey. It's the same journey that the humpbacks make. And the humpback migration is regarded as the greatest marine mammal migration journey on Earth. And here are these little minkies doing the same journey. Do you worry about them when they leave the calm and protected waters of North Queensland? I do. I do. For Alistair, it's not only a scientific concern, it's a personal one. He has formed some deep attachments to these whales, particularly this female called Bento for her bent dorsal fin, who he swam with for nine years in a row. And then I didn't see her last year and I was, I was very sad and quite concerned and so on. And then this year, I've seen her three times and uh, I, I surfed with her for about two hours on one rough encounter where we were both uh, gliding down the waves. Um, so it's been, it's been very special and she's looking great. The population of dwarf minke whales isn't yet known, but it's estimated between five to 800 of them interact with humans here each year. And today, they turn it on. Suzanne, 
16 belly presentations, 18 vocalizations. And two by vocal, is that when they're singing? That's the Star Wars noise. <laughs> it does sound like that, doesn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, like an electric guitar. It's like Beethoven's fifth played on an electric guitar. So it sort of goes da 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 dang. And sometimes when they're close, it really reverberates through your body. So da 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 dang. <laughs> The call of the minke has always been one of the great unknowns. Which whales make it? And why? But on this trip, Alistair gets the best evidence yet, that it's the male seeking a mate. The great thing about yesterday for me was the fact that it was, uh, in many ways, the culmination of 20 years of understanding about the acoustics of, of the whale. Sometimes it takes that long to get your answer. Yeah, yeah. Over three days, we had encounters with 30 dwarf minke whales. They only visit here and act like this for two months each winter. The presence of scientists and tourists seems to have no impact. It really is a magical experience. Wow, that was, that was just stunning. They are a, a beautiful animal. They are so serene to see in the water. And there were three, and they initially started circling us quite widely, and then that circle just got tighter and tighter. And then one of them actually swam directly beneath me, about three metres below. It was just so extraordinary. They're so gentle, they're so calm in the water. I want to go in again. <laughs> That's where you're happiest, isn't it, out there? I'm very happy there. <laughs> it's so interesting. There are so many things in the ocean that we just don't understand. And so it's, it's like a wonderful puzzle that you can keep nibbling away at and finding out a little bit more each year. And the longer the time goes by, the richer the stories become. How many pieces of that puzzle are still missing? Oh, most. <laughs> <laughs>